Stevie B. What's up, Bradford A? Hey, dude. How are you, man? Good. I got my new blue light glasses. Oh, oh that's what more. those are? That's what they are. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, do, I look more, do I look more like a dork than normal? No, mm. well, I'm just seeing if, is that, are those the only frames they had? Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had those in, in eighth grade welding class. They're so back. So I'm wondering. I'm wondering. The clear frames are back. The clear frames are back, buddy. They are. They are. I'm sure. I'm sure. They just, are. just give those to your mom. Speaking of things that are back. <laughs> well, you didn't even address my joke? Well, because I had an amazing segue that I couldn't let lie. Okay, go. <laughs> Speaking of amazing things that are back. Yeah. The, br the bridge is back, and we are so <laughs> lucky to be joined by Kelly Tebow. Hello. Watch out, Watch out britches. Watch out, fellas. <laughs> oh, it is What's so good to on, see Kelly? you. It's good to see y'all. Thanks for having me on. I was so stoked when I got the invitation. Oh, wow. <laughs> we are as honored to have you with us. So I saw Kelly on stage the other day. Well, other oh, week. The yeah, other I day. think it was like a week and a half A week ago. ago. Yeah, so, so how, how's it been being back? You know, um, it's been awesome. My first day back was surprisingly great. Yeah. Uh, you, what were you, you, you were expecting less? <laughs> Well, you know, I have history on that show, not to say in a negative way, but you just never know how it's going to feel, you know? Sure, sure. There's new people on the show that I don't know. Um, and, you know, it's just like, it's, it's, it's a whole thing to like get your body back into daytime. Um, right. And so I get nervous and then you have to deal with the new protocols with the masks and all sorts oh, of things. So <laughs> right. There's just a lot happening that I didn't, I, I didn't know how to prepare for. And it, it yeah. actually was an amazing day. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been off the show for how long? Well, my contract what? ended uh, 2015, but I've come back. A few times. Cause we, we had, we had some good stuff when you came back. Um, so what made you want to come back? Well, you know, um, I was camping. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Funny. That's, that's what I expected. That's story, right. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that's camping. Um, it's quarantine. I'm camping. I was last on General Hospital in, in end of January, beginning of February. And they kind of left it to where I would recur. And I was super excited about that. But obviously that didn't happen. And then Corona hit. So I was like, well, I'm never coming back. They're never going to remember me. And, um, and I got this like random text from Frank out of the blue in a spot that I happened to have service because I was right. you know, out in the wilderness, had no service most of the time. And he was like, call me. And I was like, this is odd. Oh, um, it's either good or bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's not nothing. It's not just That's like, it's, it's something. what did you have for sure. breakfast? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I called him and, you know, I've, I've had reservations about coming back full time for a while and he's been aware of that. And um, we just had a conversation and he was like, would you consider coming back for this amount of time? And I was like, well, okay, hmm, let's talk awesome. about this. Um, I think it just ended up being like the right moment. Sure. Um, yeah. And I never like to be one that closes doors that are continuing to open for you or like, you know, say no to things when they're continuing to say yes to you. So it's kind of just like the moment happened and it was perfect. Well, That's it's a good great. thing you had service because, you know, had, had you not like responded to his text right away, maybe oh, yeah. you would have read in, maybe you would have read into it a little bit. Or he would have just gone and called somebody else. You never right, know. Right. right. That, that's true with this business. You never know. There's always a, a brunette behind you, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah. what I find. So thank God for service. Do you have a lot of brunettes behind you? <laughs> well, he's got three. He's got two daughters and a wife. So, wow, that's a handful. That's a, that's a, that is a handful. Yeah, yeah. he does. Have well, a, and two little dogs that are always underfoot. But anyway, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. No, but so so that's God. Isn't it nice when things? I don't know. Kind of the the, the universe kind of just puts things in your lap like that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It just felt, it felt like the right time i think like if it cool. had been a year ago or something like that i don't quite know if i would have been as open to it and interesting sure. interestingly enough i was actually planning to uh, move to new york full-time 
I know it's awful to say during a pandemic and especially that being such a hot zone, but I was, I was like, this is my dream. I'm going to go in February. And everyone thought I was crazy. You were just thinking you'd get a deal in an apartment. That's all right. <laughs> That's one thing I thought. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> you're not going now. So sorry. I'm not going now. So I've, I've had to deal with that let down, but I'm going to try to go as much as possible. But um, well, you, That's cool. you had moved there at some point, like in the last few years, right? Yeah. Or was that never a full-time move? No, it was, and it was supposed to be in 2016. I moved there in November and um, I had a great place in the East Village. And once I got there, I kind of set up, like I had a cocktailing job. I had uh, an, an agent and a manager and an, uh, a modeling agency and a commercial agency. I had everything, but wow. um, yeah, it was, just where I was in my life at that moment was not a good time for me to be there. Um, sure. uh, I only stayed for four months. Um, right when winter was like ending, I bolted back to California and I'd been here for so long. This is kind of my comfort zone. And I just got really, I panicked really. Um, and then ever since then, I've been trying to go back. I've done like three months mm. here and there. And so. So what, what is it with New York that you want to be there so bad? You know, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's just been something that I've always loved, even in my early 20s. And the first time I ever left my small town, I went to New York to a, a modeling and talent convention. And mm. um, it was like my first time seeing the big city. I was 15 years old. And I don't know, there's just something about it that I've always loved. I love walking out of my house and just being confronted with life, with mm. energy, being able to watch people, the parks there. The Broadway, the restaurants. I just the Broadway. It. Yes. The, the Broadway. The Broadway. Yeah. The Broadway. Yes. Yeah. Well, and but that's the problem now in New York is you walk outside your door and you got the Rona. Yeah. The Rona. <laughs> yeah. yeah you're, you're confronted with something else for sure. That's yeah. well, and it's so sad because you know I, I spent my formative years in New York. I went to college there, and then a few years afterwards, and 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 yes, exactly what you say. Like you are a part of something. Yes. And now in the world we live in, you kind of have to pull away from everything. Yeah. And gosh, in New York, that would be not only logistically hard because it's not like you've got a backyard. Most people don't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so like the being, staying to yourself in New York, staying away from other people is, is logistically hard and emotionally devastating. Yeah. 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 No. So, well, it sounds like coming back was good timing. So, yeah. Then you could just figure it out. You know, I feel just good about it. Yeah, that's kind of like my yeah. my whole thing is just figure it out. Yeah, that's good. Well, well we're happy to have you back. So, it's so, nice. so awesome. So you say you're from a small town. Tell yeah. us about being from that small town, and go back as 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 early as you like. Oh, this is therapy, huh? Um... <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We'll see. Not until I hear your answer. Oh God! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm from. It's called Corsicana. It's a small town. Uh, oh, did we drove through Corsicana? Remember, Steve? Didn't we on the way? Where's it? Where? Where's it? It's fifty miles south of Dallas. So if you drive from Dallas to Houston, yeah, we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think we stopped, stopped at a bakery, Collins Street Bakery. I think we went to like a Bucky's. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we I don't know, but I think we did drive through there. Yeah, no, I just remember maybe, that. maybe a few times actually. That's I just funny. remember being in Corsic. I just remember. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. You're from there. I'm from there. Well, if you also watch the Netflix show Cheer, that's my home. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. So. Oh, maybe that's why I know it from, from that. <laughs> oh, no. That's even worse. That's even worse. No, because um, what is that junior? What Navarro Junior College, yes, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Of course, can. That's All what right. it is. All I've right. seen Science for It Was Deep, but then I watched the Netflix. Take yeah. the glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right, so so it's a small town, pretty small so, town. Yeah, small town, one high school town. Um, I lived there from first grade till I graduated high school. Um, oh, my dad was the head football coach. Yeah, at, at Navarro was the quarterback at the high school or the or at the college there. High school. That's awesome. Wow. And um, so I I did look at your Wikipedia. It said like it's the town Do said I have like a Wikipedia. Yeah, sure. <laughs> When we do I our research, to, we're, we're, a real, we're, we're a real show. Yeah. Um, so it, but the, the town good. was like L something. It was like L well, something. I'm, yeah, I'm fr I'm, I was born in El Campo. El Campo, okay. that's it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So my dad is, is, was, is a, or well, yeah, he retired. So, but he was a football coach. Um, so we kind of moved around a lot and stuff when I was younger. Wow. Oh, so so he went from from school to school or football life? Football life. Oh yes. Oh yes. Live or die football, baby. Can't watch it anymore. Can't watch it. You're you're done, huh? You can't watch any any football. Nothing. I mean, I, I, I can still get into it, but it's just, I used to like go to the bars and watch the games and, you know, was really committed, but now it's just like, yeah. I also think not to get too far off course, but uh, There's it no created course. a little bit of a, uh, like a, I didn't have my dad there as often as I should have because sure. of that. You really have to dedicate your whole life as a football coach. You know, Absolutely. There's a lot of, uh, it's very time consuming. So I think I have. A little bit of a little resentment. Yeah. Yes. Damn you, football. Yes. Arr. Damn you. Yeah. Um, well, you, so, you actually hear that a lot from a lot of successful coaches about their kids saying their dad yeah, was never, never home. Yeah. So, never. Yeah. yeah. So, what were you doing as a kid in Corsicana and what were you into? Sports. Ah. Yeah. I played a lot of sports softball, basketball, volleyball, track. I did soccer in high school. All the sports. Yeah, I did all the sports. <laughs> yeah. So and I have so, older brother, so it was like a lot of like playing, you know, army in the forest or you sure. know, doing all like. You say you have stuff. two brothers. Two older brothers, yeah. Two older brothers, and so they wanted you to play in their their games. They were they were welcoming. I don't <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> if they weren't welcoming or if I just kind of like, <laughs> just included myself. I'm not quite sure. 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 Yes. Wow. But I was very so, competitive. Like I always thought that I could run faster than them. If they had their shirt off, I wanted to have my shirt off. Like I did want well, to be one yeah. of the boys when I was young. Yeah, sure. That might, that might not work now. Yeah, so <laughs> so how did, how, where, did, where did the arts come in though? Like where did you get this creative? My mom is an art. She's an artist. She was an, she was an art teacher. Awesome. Um, and from a really early age, I loved singing. I like obsessed over singing. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, so I would like perform in my room. I had these like dice hanging from my ceiling fan in my room. And I would think that that was the mic and I'd perform <laughs> shows. Oh, like a cool, like old timey hanging mic? Yeah, that's yes. awesome. No, that's like, all- <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and I would just like lock myself in my room and do these performances and record myself and um, what kind of music what, what, did you, yeah what did were you, you singing sung? then were you singing like dolly Parton or were you singing like country no i was kind of doing well i did like amy grant okay oh, yeah. sure yeah. yeah um and then i got into Alanis morissette and whitney houston and mariah carey and oh, wow uh, so you were you were you were you were doing i mean singing. i thought i had a voice like them you know right. <laughs> right. i went with the best obviously nice yeah. i was gonna say yeah yeah wow it's um, always fun. It's always fun hearing like young kids try to riff like those. Yeah. Like, oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> Is it? It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, not if you're in your room by yourself, then it's just charming. Yeah, sure. it's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but as you get older, did start to think about, okay, well, if, if I love this so much, how do I, how do I create a life that can support this or no? You know, I get really envious of people who have that story of like, I knew early on that I wanted to be an actor or singer. I don't know what was missing in my brain, but I didn't connect the dots that that was a career, that that was like- Sure, you well, from small towns, so, yeah, from small yeah. towns, that's hard. Like I just didn't have that, I didn't, uh, awareness. And so right. I wanted to sing. I did a couple of plays in my community, um, and I, but I still didn't like latch on to the acting thing. And then um, I used to do these, these uh, competitions called oral reading. So you would pick a play or a short story and you would have to read it aloud and you would get judged at like how you tell a story. Mm, and I think that like kind of slow yeah. got me into it. Um, but majority of time, like in middle school and high school, I just wanted to play sports and hang out with my friends. I had a very normal life up until when I was 15, I was a cheerleader and my cheerleading coach. Whoo, yes. Really was, that a, was, that, but was that kind of, well, I, I mean, was that kind of expected a little bit? No, just not at girl? all. Okay. Yeah. No, no I just. I mean, we went to the games on Friday nights anyways, and all of my friends were cheerleaders. I guess I was like, well, I'll do what they want to do. I don't, I don't sure. know. Um, but 
I started doing that. And then my cheerleading coach was like, Hey, there's this audition up in Dallas for modeling and mm. uh, who wants to go? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll go. I don't know what modeling is, but I'll go. So I went up to this agency, John Robert Powers. You remember? Oh that? yes, we do know John Robert Powers. Yes. Yeah. You model people know that. I'm like, that sounds like a cool name. Yeah. 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 It's an interesting um, business. Go ahead. It, it is an interesting business. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so I went there and I started working with them. They signed me, whatever you want to call that, sure. put me on some sort of scholarship and uh, started doing some modeling stuff in Dallas. I was doing like cheerleading magazines where you're modeling like uniforms and pom poms and like catalogs and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I got the opportunity to go to IMTA. Are you familiar with that? I am not. No, what is that? National Modeling and Talent Association, I think. It's this convention I went to in New York where you audition for all these agents and producers. Well, that's cool. Whatever, yeah. For modeling uh, specifically? Modeling and acting, but yeah, I oh, went modeling. Okay. specifically for modeling. I did an audition for, I did this commercial audition. It was my first time ever doing anything like that. I had no idea what I was doing. Like first time like reading copy and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, didn't win any sort of award or anything like that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Why would I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I signed with the modeling agency and that's kind of how I made it out here to LA because it was an agency that was based oh. here. Yeah. So, but that was when you, uh, you said you signed with that people, those people in Dallas when you were 15. So when this happened, were you more towards the 18 side or? So, no. So what happened was, um, my mom didn't want me to miss school or kind of miss having a normal life. So I could only right. model, do any sort of jobs during the summertime. At the oh, time yeah. I hated her for that. So I was like, you're ruining my life. No, and you're like, she was you totally know? right. But yeah. now I'm like, thank goodness she yeah. did that because Yay, mom. it could have happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I got work here and there and then this agency in LA really wanted me to come out. So I worked it out to where I could graduate high school a year early. Um, wow. So I graduated three years at 17 and I drove out to LA. Really? Wow. With yeah. no, f with no family with you. My mom came with me to set me up okay. in a mom's apartment in Beverly Hills. Um, I had one person out here that I knew was this guy that I was dating at the time. Very weird story. Um, <laughs> you don't want to know that. It's so nope. strange. We'll, we'll fast so, forward so, past so that. So mom's like, no, no modeling for you except in the summers. Hey, you want to move to LA with this weird yeah. guy? Uh, yeah. Hey, no modeling for you in the summers, but you can date an actor that lives in LA your senior year of high school. That makes yeah. so much sense. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, hey, but none of like, Moms don't know, right? Like I think they're make, supposed to. Aren't they they should. <laughs> well, but I mean, maybe they you're right. No, like, or their dad should know. Yeah, well, maybe. you know, dad wasn't around. Yeah, come on, dad. All right, dad was off coaching coaching football. Dad wouldn't yeah. let that happen. My parents divorced. That's why dad wasn't. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Got I it. See. Yeah, sure. All right. Sure. So, so uh, what was that like? As a, I mean. And you, so your first time out of that small town, like, I mean, had you been, obviously you go to Dallas, so Dallas is a big city, but yeah. like, how, what, how big of a culture shock was it moving to LA for you? Oh my gosh. It was yeah. sure. crazy. Yeah, my yeah, car was getting towed every week. I'm Would not you not read? No, I just, <laughs> I grew up in a neighborhood that had no street cleaning. There was no like, parking times. There was nothing like, yeah, I, right. So I didn't, it took me a while to get, you know, yeah, I did, I did get a lot of parking sure. tickets myself too. Sure. Yeah. All the time. All, all my the money time. went there. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Well, um, when you were a huge culture shock. Yeah. When you were 17, could you, like, could you work? Like where, where were you working? Like, were you making money on your modeling jobs or were you no. doing like, 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 you know, subsistence jobs. Yeah. I had money that I saved from these like cheerleading catalogs that I was doing. Um, I was living in a model's apartment. And so I moved here in 2000, May of 2000. My birthday was in August. So I was turning 18 that year. Oh, okay. I, don't know, I mean, I guess I technically, I'm not quite sure how that worked. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, cause on, if you're under 18 on a TV show, yeah. you're, you have some restrictions, I think. Right. Unless you're yeah, emancipated. Modeling, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, modeling, they're, they're, they're probably you don't know, they're, They don't care. Yeah, they, they don't care. They don't care <laughs> about anything. Let's, <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so did you start working out here right away or did you, was there some downtime or what? Yeah. Um, you know, um, it was a big growing experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I didn't quite handle the first couple of years really well. Um, mm. I, you know, it was weird because all of my friends back home that I spent my whole entire life with were in their senior year of high school. And mm. I was here in this big city. I had, I didn't know anyone. This guy that I was dating broke up with me after the first month that I moved here. And um, so I was really lost and had no idea who I was, my self-worth, anything. So I went through a lot of, um, you know, kind of really shitty experiences as one would in a big city. Yeah. And I was a yes person. Um, so I was definitely more focused on making others happy than I was like a career or, sure. you know, taking sure. care of yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, so my modeling agency here would get really fed up with me because I was missing castings. Um, oh. doing a lot of like really, really shitty things. And so they, they shipped me off to Milan. They're like, Hey, we have this great opportunity for you in Milan. You should go. And I was like, okay, I've never been. As your punishment yeah, exactly. <laughs> for going to Milan. <laughs> and don't you say no, dearie. Very like, weird. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, <clears throat> and then that was also a disaster, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> amazing. I was there for six months. I had an Italian boyfriend. I was eating the most delicious food ever. I gained like 20 pounds. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a bit of a experience. It took me a really long time to kind of plant my feet, get grounded, figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I went through a lot of different experiences of like <clears throat> trying to go to London, trying to go to Greece, trying to make this modeling thing work. I was very unhappy and also in really dysfunctional relationships. And um, so I probably by the time I was like 20, I I'm trying to remember, I did these David Guetta music videos. Right. And the DJ. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of my first time really being in front of a camera and like really doing somewhat of acting, you know. Did and you ever say, I'm with the DJ? <laughs> no. Stupid. <laughs> Thank God I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So once I started doing that, uh, I was like slowly getting a taste for being in front of a camera and seeing what this acting thing was about. But it took me even longer after that. I mean, I went through, you know, other experiences. And then by the time I got, I would think I was like 26, 27. Mm. And I was, I just came back from London and I was like, what am I doing? This modeling thing is awful. I'm not happy. Um, I want to act. I want to figure out what this acting thing is. And I remember um, watching Braveheart for like the fifth time and being so moved by Mel Gibson. I'm like, I, I want to do that. What Mel Gibson right. is doing to me, I want to do to other people. Sure. And, Slay uh, them with a broadsword. Yes. <laughs> Kill them all. Yeah. Lock, I'm going to get up. into acting. Line them up. <laughs> Line them up. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Amazing. Yeah, that's kind of like my slow. So what? So what was the road after that? Once you made the decision, was it was the path a little more clear? Yeah, it was. I was here. I stayed in LA. Um, you know, I was doing like waitressing and things like that, and um, not really doing the modeling thing as much anymore. And started going to class. Um, I went to Leslie Kahn, and nice. I had no agent or manager had no idea how to even get an agent or manager and i was doing these like acting uh these uh casting director workshops yes um which at that time were like really huge right. and legal <laughs> yeah well <laughs> yeah yes right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and i did one for jeffrey drew who was at the time working uh with patrick well he worked with patrick rush but they were doing chuck and um, they, they used to leave you like, like a review, like tell you what your strengths are, what you should work on, all this stuff. And he was like, you're a star, go to this acting teacher. You just need a little bit of work. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So I went to Leslie Kahn and I started studying with um, John Rosenfield who was right underneath her. And he was like, hey, who's your manager? And I was like, I, I don't have one. And he was like, well, I know this guy, he's my manager. And I think that you would really, he would like you. So he set up a meeting for me and uh, went in and 
chatted with him and he was not really like we had a good time we had a good meeting but he wasn't quite sure about me and had had a few questions because at this point I was like 28 it's a little late to I mean start unfortunately, yeah unfortunately there is that thing in our industry where sure. you do feel like time is of value and I and I had wasted a lot of time in the beginning here um and so I was like, well, so I left the meeting. He was like, yeah, I'm unsure. I don't know. And I was like, well, you want me to put something on tape for you? I'm happy to audition for you. And I did. And he's been my manager ever since. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So when you were, when you were, obviously you started taking acting class, but your, your way of connecting to material, your, your desire to tell stories, you had that. Um, mm -hmm. Is that, is that something that's always been in you, you think? Um, so when I was younger, like I, I loved movies, loved film. I, I was so dramatic. It was a very dramatic, like I cried all the time. I would, I remember watching Romeo and Juliet with uh, Leonardo and Claire Danes. And I yeah. rewound the very last bit where he dies and she wakes you, up. I, I you love violent it. movies. Yes, <laughs> I cried. I just loved to yeah. cry. Yeah. And, so I was very dramatic um, and I loved film and, but yeah, I don't know, like there was never this, I say that Mel Gibson story because I do feel like that was kind of the aha moment where I was like, sure, that is amazing. That sure. it, it actually like connected the dots for me personally, yeah. with what I was experiencing from someone on screen. Yeah. Um, and it did still take some time for me to be like, yes, this is something I want to pursue. But yeah, it just like slowly kind of started. Was there something in the acting class, like any sort of any specific, like, I don't know if, if you want to call it technique or any, anything that you, that clicked for you? I think um, when I started getting a reaction, like I love to make people laugh. I love to entertain people and make people laugh. So when I started seeing my reaction or what pe people's reaction for me, it was kind of this like, I loved it. You know, I really enjoyed um, having that experience with them. And uh, I think that like probably happened in Leslie Kahn. And then I did this other class um, and there were such a, it was like all plays we worked on and it was scene study and it was such a good group of people in the class. And also like really kind of going through all these emotions and working things out personally with myself through this material. Sorry. Uh, my guard dogs. Yeah. <laughs> get them. I think, yeah, I think just class really helped me find my way and uh, just discover that this is something that I really wanted to pursue. So just taking it a little, a little deeper. So you, you came on the show here. I know you did some stuff before that, but like 2004, did you say 14? It's the end of 2012. Oh, end of 2012. Okay. So yeah. um, obviously you got to do a lot of, a lot of stories here, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're, you know, cause there's times here where you're like, oh, this is why I act, right? You get that one moment or something in a yeah. scene and you're like, oh, that's it. So being here, did it really kind of confirm like, oh man, this is awesome. Even though there's not an audience, even though there's not a reaction until you go out, maybe do appearances mm -hmm. and stuff, but just being on stage and having maybe those moments with people, actors, actresses on mm -hmm. the show, did it kind of, was it, was it more enlightening or was it like a reconfirmation of, Hey, this is what I love to do. Yeah. It was probably just a more of a confirmation of this is what I love to do. Like I, at that point in my career, I'd already, I just decided like, I love this. I think I'm talented and I belong doing this. Um, people have a reaction to me, whether that's just in my personality or whatever it is. And I love telling stories. I think what I was looking for in my life was a way to experience so many things, you know, and be involved in so many things um, that you don't get to do in your normal life. You know, we get to go and tell stories that are absolutely ridiculous sometimes, or we tell a story that's like really deeply rooted in truth and that sure. people go through and experience and they can relate to, to us. And that's really cool. I think over time, like, especially being on General Hospital, I just got to see a bigger picture of it all. You know, I really got to see like what this is and the effects that it has on people and how it makes me feel. And 
I loved like GH, you feel like daytime, you feel like you're doing some sort of stage production, you know, it is very much out because you have four or five cameras. And um, so that I really loved and the energy of that. Um, yeah, I think it just like confirmed it even more. Cool. When you first came on and first got the experience of being on stage, obviously you said you've, you know, you were kind of an outgoing, you, ha you had some outgoing, you tendencies and modeling is an outgoing thing, even if it's not, I guess, right? I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't I, know. Like, modeling was tough for me because I come from a sports background. So I was used to doing things that involved some sort of skill or talent. Not to say that modeling doesn't, but for me, it didn't feel like I was using my talents. It's hard it, to know if you're doing it right. Yeah. It was or if just, you're doing it, anything at all. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Right. Sure. It is tough. I don't want to downplay modeling whatsoever, but it just, for me, wasn't, there was something more that I needed to be a part of. And the stuff that you did before GH was all more single camera stuff, I imagine, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I did like chalk and castle sure. and, you know, right. a bunch of other things. Yeah. So, but the experience of yeah. being on our stage and having that, that freedom is what it feels like to me to, to, follow an ins follow a physical instinct to follow what uh, an emotional instinct to follow whatever instinct you feel would best tell the story in that moment there that sounds that sounds to me like it would feel good to you yeah the one thing that's interesting about daytime is that you, yes i agree with you there is that freedom but there's also for me sometimes i feel like i'm in a box a little bit of a box mm. um you know of what does of what making um I guess sometimes I'm wanting more freedom to kind of have impulses right, right in the moment of things, you know, everything is like blocked so specifically and planned out so specifically that I sometimes miss just being able to just throw something out there and see what happens and move when you feel like you want to move. So I guess what it's taught me is that I really have to do more work, way more work to make it feel, you know, authentic and not like forced upon me. Does that make any sense? Mm. Interesting. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to say too, I, th I think some of the constraint can also be that you only get one or two takes max. Yeah, that for sure. Right. So it's like, um, like when Bradford and I worked together the other day, I mean, we, we probably did the scenes 15 times before we went upstairs. Mm -hmm. So we were on take 16 as yeah. opposed to take one. Right. <laughs> And then I, I think that confidence of knowing your stuff that well or uh, having run it with your scene partner enough, and then you can kind of let it go and see what happens. You yeah. Know? But a lot of times people don't have a chance to run stuff and you get up there and you're like, okay, take one is take one. Yeah. You're like, well, that sure sucked. Yeah. And that's not a good idea. That's, definitely that's not a great idea at all, by the way. Yeah. Anybody. So, <laughs> the, the character that you came into play, did you have an idea coming in that she was a little dastardly? Okay, first of all, I, let's clear this up. I don't, well, not clear it up. Let's just set the platform here. Right. Who's your mom? Lisa Obrecht. Okay, right. and, and your, your dad's, dad's freaking phase on. Phase on. Yeah. So did you, did what? you know, did you know that coming in, you had to like be a little like, you know? Oh. So I actually, I auditioned for Mark several times and then I auditioned for Steve, your character. Cause you, when did you leave? You auditioned for Jason? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we, we, were up, we were up against each other, yeah. Well, I mean, look at your guns. Hey, you got them. You got the Jason made a, guns. She would made a great Jason. <laughs> made I, a great I, Jason. Listen, I want to be bad. I want to have a gun. I want to like... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, well, this isn't the way to get a gun. Just so you know. Just so you know. We're, we're not in Texas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I left. I actually left in uh, end of 2012. Like okay, yeah. Because September. I auditioned, I mean, the material you auditioned with is really never actually the role, but never, I was yeah. told that it was to play like your nanny or something. I think My nanny. Early 2012. Okay. All right. So I auditioned for Frank for that role. And then like a week later, I got a call and they're like, hey, it's not going to work out for that role, but we have this like evil doctor, like, you know, I forget how they described it, but uh, we, we think Kelly, like the strong doctor we think kelly would be right from they offered me brit i didn't have to audition straight up. awesome yeah, oh, amazing like, yeah so right crazy. yeah and and you have such history on the show just coming in yeah which is kind well, of was crazy she, was she not a, already not a great history 
Well, but at Wait, the time, what are you when, talking about? What do you mean? Well, Face off, it's horrible. Oh. horrible. <laughs> Coming in is like, usually when you're going to be that much of a legacy a tied to those people, they have a long story for you. So was Brit not necessarily tied to them yet? I don't think so, honestly, because mm. I guess my mother was already on the show, which I didn't know until recently. Um, and then I came on and I was just a recurring character. And I think they just, the writers just saw, the, we, I mean, we even look alike, me and Kathleen. Oh, you guys um, are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So right I, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how it happened, but I knew nothing about Phase On. I knew nothing about, they're like, I, I actually, in, in real life, I, I had uh, broken my femur. I, I broke my leg and uh, how'd you do that um <laughs> you know I just, bought, I just bought a pair of these really beautiful heels and I decided to go furniture shopping in them what? which I've never done before ever and I go to the back of the store and they have like the clearance area up on this stage and so I walk up these like really janky wooden stairs and I'm looking around and I'm going back down the stairs and my heel gets caught on like a hole oh. or something, and I tumble down and land right on my knee on concrete, and it just oh. splits, splits my femur. First bone I ever broke. Oh. Wow! Of all, yeah. all, all the all the sports. Yeah, all the sports. I mean, come on. And you broke the biggest one. Isn't the femur like the biggest bone? Yes, you really, you really went for it. Go big or go home. <laughs> That's my style. That's Texas. Wow. Uh, and I just signed a contract, so I was like, oh. And I texted Frank. I got the the uh, MRI results that it was broken and I needed surgery. And anyways, they wrote it into the script. Thank God. I remember it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I was on yeah. crutches. And that was like the first time I met this mother character of mine. I was like, oh, I have a mother. Okay, that's great. I'm on crutches and very vulnerable. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> she talk and she talks weird. Why is she? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? We're still Woman. trying to figure that out. After. <laughs> We're not we sure. did a podcast with her uh, about six months ago, and she's still like we we put it out, and people were like, "I didn't know that she didn't have an accent." And I was <laughs> like, "So funny! What? Great job!" Yeah. Well, when I picture her, like I don't picture her talking regular. That's funny. It's always yeah. with the accent. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of going big or go home, Kathleen is that kind of person. Oh, she I doesn't, she so doesn't, much. she doesn't like creep into anything. She jumps. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. It's yeah, great. It's awesome. Uh, so, That's but amazing. Were you, once you kind of realized the character that you were playing, um, were you excited by that? One of the things that made me think about that box that you feel is when you're playing a character that you feel is supposed to be this way, evil or whatever, I, I, there is, I would imagine there is some feeling of like, oh, well, I, I kind of feel like this, but no, I have to do this. Um, and I wonder if that felt, felt like a constraint of sorts. Yeah, I think so. I I mean, when I, early, when I, early on when I started, I definitely had to work hard at going against all of that bitchiness and cattiness, and I don't want to play that. I think, I think at times it's necessary because of my family history, and once I found that out, it kind of made sense, yeah. more sense. Um, but yeah, I all, I'm always trying to go against it because they, I mean, they really write her like she is just. You know, it's always trying to find that, even if it's not no scenes, it's always trying to find why you're this way or the vulnerability okay. in other scenes where you can at least show like, oh, we see why she's this way. You know, that's, yeah. that's always kind of the catch 22 for a character like yours is finding those moments where people go, Oh, I feel for her. I, even though she's the bridge, I get why she's that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so. I think honestly, not to toot my own horn, but um, I'm Ooh, going go to. ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think because I got into this flow with her as you do when you spend time with the character, you know, um, to where I allowed my personality to come through. And I think that made her a little bit more likable because I don't, to this day, I'm kind of shocked that people like, like her as much as they do and right. she she is also i think a little bit different than because of the weird personality stuff that i brought to it she is a different character on a soap um i do try to bring in humor i do i do that a lot i don't know if i'm successful with it but i do try to do that um so yeah maybe it's just helped make her a little bit more likable i don't know absolutely yeah. well i mean the the i think the thing that really separates some characters from others is 
as Steve said, the vulnerability, but the way to, the way to figure that out is to actually figure out what they, what they want on, you know, mm -hmm. not, not just like to, to, you know, you're not just going into a scene going to belittle, but ultimately yeah. th like thinking, I want to be with this, yeah. this person's boyfriend. So I want that affection. I want that love. I will so steal these embryos. <laughs> right. So, right. I know. Like, but, but ultimately it's because you want love or whatever, right? Like, it's, so it's finding that, which is sometimes challenging because the scene is not written yeah. with those, with those under or overtones. It's just, mm, I'm going to steal these embryos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I do find so. it's all, it's kind of change. It changes that, 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 that like overall why it changes, you know, when you get oh, more sure. information, you're like, yeah. oh, you have to, it really is like you're, like you're an investigator, you know, you're trying to figure it out who totally. this person is. Yes, yeah. peeling the onion of the character. Yes, yeah. right. yes, yes, yes. So, All right, uh, enough General uh, Hospital talk. Um, well, sorry to bore you. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I do a little? I don't watch I wanna... the show, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so okay, enough I'll... character talk, but I want to know. No, okay, go ahead. I want to know, you have obviously felt the push and pull of the career of, of the career implications of being on daytime and the limitations it puts on your time. And mm -hmm. right. So it's interesting. Um, I, I've certainly felt that we just had Dominic on the show a few weeks ago talking about that. And it, have you felt a shift not only in our ages and our careers, or, but in the industry in the last, I don't know, three to five years, I guess, but it's certainly now, with nothing really being in production, certainly more, but like, have you felt a shift in that at all? Or is, obviously you're back on the show, so you've come to terms with a little bit, but like, in um, how is that, has that shifted at all in the last five to seven years for you? You're saying like kind of the opportunities that come my way, is that what you're saying? Not just that, but the overall, because I found in, in the industry right now, a job is a job more so than it was when I started GH in 2008. Hmm. So you can, there's still limitations on time, yeah. of course, but I still think, I still feel like I'm in a better position if I have a job than if I'm completely available. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it's yeah. just the power you bring into the room because you, you don't need this. That's probably part of it, but I think, I think the industry has shifted a little bit in terms of like, you know, not looking down on what we do. Yeah. Um, I can't say that I have experienced that. I can't say that like, I was actually shocked when I, when I got off the show the first time, not thinking that I was the shit or anything like that, but I thought that I would have, you know, I have this experience. I have all these episodes that I've done. I'm a right. legit actor. I have all this training that I got paid right. for. Yeah, this is amazing. Right. Right. Um, I thought that I would have a better response and better luck out in the other parts of our business. And I didn't. And not to say that that's only because of General Hospital. Sure. I was also in a very weird place personally. Um, but I wish I felt like people in our business looked at daytime differently than what they do, in my opinion. Mm. And I don't know, like for me, I don't know why I'm this way, but I've never looked at it for like, like, I don't want to get a job to pay my bills. I want to get like the, the money part of it actually means nothing to me. And I know that's very weird to say, like, I've been broke most of my adult life. I mean, I, I still work at a restaurant right now. You know, I've worked at a restaurant pretty much since all of my twenties and into my thirties. Um, so for me, it's like, I just want to do things that are valuable and make me feel amazing and that I'm really excited to be a part of. And I do still have dreams of, you know, being a movie star, whatever that sounds like or looks like, like I want to do movies and I don't even know if sure. that's going to be possible anymore with the world we live in. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. But, like, well, I mean, you have, you have the muscles for an, a Marvel character. Ah, the only movie Robin, Robin. Right. Those are the only <laughs> movies they make anymore. So you just yeah, got to find true. a Marvel character you can be. Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. We'll All see. right. <laughs> Done with the acting talk, Bradford. Okay. Okay. Well, what, what but, else but are you the, into? I want to know yeah. what else she's into. I, 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 look, we know I, she's into acting. She loves it. That's great. Well, but I love I wanna, that she's into restaurants because that is. Well, that's fine too. That's a good steady gig, right? 
That's well, good. And also, that, like... I've been sound- working at a restaurant at a bar and, and served a table. It's like, you're a Brit from General Hospital. Yeah, I'm like, how's that? <laughs> well, but you, cho- but you chose the lead. Right. Yes, right? I did. Right? So yeah. it wasn't like right. they were like, hey, yeah. you suck. Get yeah. back well, no. to the restaurant. Yeah. But the person at the table doesn't, doesn't know understand that, that yeah, doesn't yeah. Under, and doesn't understand that choice either. Well, that's yeah. true too. Yeah. Right. So anyway, um, well, that's do you remember a, that do you remember that scene in Fame? Do you remember that movie Fame? And they're like, Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. So there's the no, there's the guy no that all does. the kids idol all the kids idolize, who's like the senior, and then you know, they get to be seniors and they find the cool guy working at a restaurant and they're like, Oh, so what happened? And you're like and then you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. And then, but that's all of our lives. Like I yeah. miss, I miss working in restaurants. I <laughs> love it. He loves I, it. Seriously. I, I love it. He loves it. Why don't yeah. you, oh, oh, I did watch one of your podcasts to prepare for this. And I heard you say that if you weren't an actor, you would own a bar. Well, yes. he would be a, what's it called? Alcoholic? No, <laughs> no, no. That's what you are now. <laughs> you, you, that's what you are that's today. Sparkling water in that can, right? Yeah, sure it is. No, but what is it? The the wine person, the thing. Sommelier. 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 There you go. Yeah, that's the, yeah. That, that, that would be his job. He would love that. In a just a dark, nice room full of oak and maybe a few cigars and just yeah. serve wine. Sounds amazing. I wine. love the human connection. I love the human connection of it. I minus minus the horrible people that think that you're their servants. Minus <laughs> that. Guess. Which happens, you know, all the time. time. But to be able to provide people a nice experience and have that connection in in, in its truest sense when it works the way it should, it's lovely. I agree. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, as so in when you are doing your side job, trying to, what are the other ways that you can feed yourself creatively? Do you have any other, um, any, any other ways that you try to, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just picked up voiceover work, as you could tell that. Yeah. Thing, Sweet that Mike. It's been really exciting. Um, I love doing voices. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm good at them, but I love doing them. And so I started doing that, which has been fun and getting out some of my creative juices. Um, yeah. How else do I do it? I don't know. Honestly, mm-hmm. I watch a lot of movies and TV and not that that like gets out any sort of creative flow, but, um, it's nice to plug into like really incredible productions. Yeah. It's, and- inspi- it's inspiring for sure, yeah. right? Well, sure. And it's research too, right? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not, it's not Started just- watching um, Raised by Wolves yesterday. Have you heard about the show on HBO? No, I, see, I saw you, oh. I saw you talk about it on Twitter though. What is it? Get oh, is off it- of Twitter. <laughs> Get off worry. of Twitter. Are you not on Twitter, Steve? Uh, we're not, I'm not really on Twitter anymore. Is your assistant on Twitter for you? No, no I just, I just, <laughs> I am. Tweet- Yes, Bradford is my assistant. Yeah. And I treat him very well, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Treat him very well. Did you Get, buy yeah. her those new glasses? I did. I bought I bought her those glasses. She's my girl. I gotta take care of her. That's amazing. Oh. Amazing. So is Raised by Wolves like a document a documentary or is it it's sci-fi? It's scripted? Oh, wow. sci-fi. Scott directed the first two episodes. It's Who did? Ridley Scott. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's it's- pretty big. It's written, it's created from the, the guy who did um, Punisher. Oh, nice. Oh, that movie? Great. Yeah. Awesome. Anyways, it is, you don't have to be a sci-fi fan to like this. It's just like the most original s- story you've ever seen. And it's just crazy. It awesome. So good. Wow. Wow. I'm I might favorite. check that out next. Can I, um, I got to get through Yellowstone first. I know. I need to start that. I have, you know, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit ticked off that I have to pay for each episode. I have to say. Sorry. Well, yeah, you have because it was on Paramount Network, and then it went over to Amazon, and that's how you can watch it. Unless you got to go get the Paramount Network. So I, I don't even know how to get that I Paramount know. Network. So I just bought. I bought the first season, and we're a couple. A couple shows in. It's pretty good. Are there twelve or like twenty two? There's not. There's three seasons. Yeah. And there's, I think, nine in the first uh, first okay. season. Right. So, so it's not and, and they're all, uh, the first one's an hour and a half, and the, uh, everyone else is an hour. So, okay. Oh. Pretty good. I heard it's really good. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good so far. I was going to say <laughs> something. Are you a Kevin Costner fan or you hate Kevin Well, that, that, no, I like Kevin Costner. Let's just, I like Kevin Costner. Uh, he just, sometimes when it's like the super emotional stuff, he doesn't really deliver the performance that he should be. 
Okay, well, let's go back to Robin Hood, guys, okay? Because well, he fucking killed it. Yeah, yeah his yeah. accent was amazing. Yeah, sure he did. Yeah, he really did. The accent anyway. that he used in the first... The accent that he used Kelly, in the first we're not going to be friends if you're saying that he, he killed it as Robin Hood. You're going to be I dropped the rest. I thought you did a great job. You, well, I you thought you were being you, sarcastic. You watched no, it when you were 13 and completely you were 12. enamored. You were 12. Yeah. You we're going to rewatch. Be okay. You just, hey, we're going to rewatch that again. We're gonna, yeah. I'm going to pull up some scenes, and you're going to go, gonna yes. Mystery Five Science stars. 3000 with us three. I, yes. I actually no. watched it during quarantine. I was hungover one day, and I laid in bed and watched Robin Hood, and it was amazing. All right, Bradford, like end, the this, flowy, end the this flowy, interview. The flowy hair. <laughs> you guys are never going to have me back. Huh? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, we will. Uh, so, okay. Well, for the fans of ours that watch GH, are you, what are you most excited about for Brit to experience now that she's back on the canvas? Do you have any, I mean, for, for you, what would you like to see her experience? Well, um, you know, I would like to see her not be so... <laughs> wow okay oh, everybody uh sorry uh, ear earmuffs to all the kids in the minivans you, right you now want me, you want me to answer that again <laughs> sorry no you're fine we, uh, no it, it, they'll, just be, they'll just be a space <laughs> yeah so, no it'll just be empty it won't beep but it'll just be a space and so they'll see us react and oh, um that's you're, fine. Yeah, you're fine yes yeah so what do you want to see what do you want to see happen yeah you know i would love to just i don't know she's been such a big kind of personality on the show i would love to ground her a little bit and have her go through something that's real and like heart-wrenching and relatable and awesome but i did just get some news from frank well uh, that the writer might... wanted me to know that i'm not going to say now but it does add an element to her that um i hope they'll do a good job playing it out over okay i have we'll a great it, storyline we'll for that. you we'll leave it at that just in case I yeah. have a great story. I have a great storyline. You do? Yeah. Wouldn't it be really heart wrenching if you lost a half brother? And and that what's is it? So original. And who is that half brother, Bradford? Heinrich Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have motives because of Maxi? I don't know. I was just thinking it'd be a cool story for 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 Brit, for Brit? to experience. Oh, yeah, just lose a brother so she could have some good scenes. I've yep. already I'm lost a brother once, guys. Who's that? Oh, Nathan. oh, my other rival. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hmm, these guys There's are it. dropping like flies. They're catching. <laughs> 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 well, could happen. You never know. Oh, oh it's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, well, we're, we're excited so you're back. Yeah. We are so thrilled to have you back. I know the fans are as well. And we look forward to not only working with you, but seeing the greatness that you bring to the screen. Oh, yes. thanks. Yes. So welcome back. Yes. And I can't wait to work with y'all. Thank you, awesome. Kelly. Appreciate you. 